Okay, guys, welcome again. Uh, so today we're starting a, a rather complicated project. Uh, I hope it's not going to be so complicated, but standing behind me, you can see uh, there's a uh, Land Rover that's uh, actually been sitting since November of 2018, and I picked it up yesterday it's actually my brother's car uh, but it wasn't working so we're going to try to see if we can get it fixed uh, so just we'll do a quick walk around and uh, show you the inside I haven't done anything I just got it yesterday it's about 20 degrees now it's freezing uh, so we'll try to see if we can get this thing running okay so just do a quick walk around see what we got <laughs> To work with um, the outside the thing about this car is there's hardly any rust anywhere even though this is midwest so it's usually pretty rusty the back window is not blown out it's actually uh, just stuck inside because of the electronics apparently the problem with the car was it uh, has a problem with the uh, engine control unit so the ECU itself is but you can see there's hardly any rust anywhere uh, so it looks like it'll be a good daily driver uh, let's take a look inside this is unfortunately the worst part is the inside part uh, with the window down they didn't catch it for a while so it kind of got attacked by by birds <laughs> as we can see here so it's uh yeah it needs some cleaning up but it should clean up pretty good so we'll look at this and see how we can uh, get this thing running. Uh, I haven't done anything since it got here. And the only thing I did was put the battery on charge to see if we get any juice. So I, what I think I'm going to do is actually just take the, uh, the ECU that was in it and swap it with the ECU, uh, a new ECU. So wait a minute, I said that backwards. The ECU that's in it now is actually the uh, the new one, but it was causing trouble. So let's let's start. Uh, let's pop the hood so you guys can take a look at that too. So uh, yeah, picking someone else's project is always questionable at best. So, like I said, the only thing I did was put the battery on charge. I haven't done anything but the manifold and all that. The, the cover has already been taken off. But they say, you know, the culprit is this ECU right in here. So we're going to see if we can get it going. Uh, all right. So let me uh, set you guys up in a stand and we'll take a look. Okay. So first thing I want to do is actually change out the battery charger I've got a small one hooked up to it and I went and picked up a, a bigger one so this one will have a little more power and we can, that way the electronics can be energized oh boy that's heavy all right where what are we doing But at the same time, I guess we could actually uh, we could actually put it in the right place. I was the wrong place. So let's uh, let's just okay. Now see what happens when we plug it in it's going to uh, do a quick check to see it says connect the clamps it's not even reading a voltage the battery is so dead <laughs> oh wow that sucks there's absolutely no voltage whatsoever on the battery <laughs> I guess that would explain why it didn't charge up last night. So, uh, if you can see the screen, it says connect the clamps. But let's see if we could just do it. Uh, uh, 
let's give it all the juice she's got on the engine start yeah, let's just turn it over just to see if it does turn over oh, there's no life what did I do Did we do something wrong? Did I pull the clamps out by mistake? No. It's so cold that the batteries don't even want to work. So I've got no juice coming into the car. whatsoever so what I'm going to do is fiddle around with that a bit and figure out what's going on I'll bring you guys back uh, so we can try to turn it over together not quite sure why the battery charger I mean technically it's got a mode where you could uh, you could start the battery but it's not doing it so what I'm going to do is uh, plug in one of these uh, what do they call those? Jump packs. Let's see if we get any life out of the car. Okay, now it's chiming. So that battery is completely dead. <laughs> There's no juice. Let's see if it turns over. I highly doubt it, but we'll try it. <laughs> It's not turning over. Do we have any? Yeah, so the fans work and all that. Okay, so let me uh, heat myself up. It's freezing. Give it some thought. See if we can find a battery. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, a little warmer we're up to 36 37 degrees I'm gonna see if it if turn over all right well, the alarm works <laughs> but it shouldn't have gone off let's see if it just for no. all right so it, it's not working so what I do what I'll do is what I did is to go ahead and let's just change out the battery all together uh, I went to a, a friendly neighborhood Walmart and got a got the cheapest battery I can find don't want to sink too much into this until we figure out whether or not it's going to actually work <clears throat> Now this uh, this red cable here is actually something that we put in a while ago. I'm going to just take that off because I have no idea if there's if it's actually causing any shorts. It was an amplifier cable. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. It's when I saw this car for the first time yesterday in a few years. It's kind of sad because it was a nice little car. And uh, I don't know. They claim that the uh, the brain is fried, and then they tried to convince my brother to change out the engine and all that. I said, no, no. Let's let's just take a look at it. You know, uh, let's see what's going on first, and then we'll uh, we'll see whether or not it needs that drastic of a of a change. So let's tighten this down. You know, when I had it off, I should have wanted to put some grease on that. All right. Okay.
I think I'm going the back. Huh? What do you think? Well, I was going right. I went too much. Ah, there we go. All right. Now, this battery has a handle to it, which is nice. But the battery butt, it does not. Picked a great place to put the, this roof hood holder upper. <laughs> All right. I didn't even see a battery tray in here. That's strange. Huh. What is the battery sitting on? What's that? Wow, yeah, there is. I don't see a battery tray. Let me, let me show you guys real quick. <laughs> so, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Yeah, there's, uh, unless we put the battery in the wrong orientation, but I don't see a tray so we'll just set it down like that and we'll figure out how we're gonna get that later but for now we'll just keep moving on let me get a battery post cleaner and we'll just scrape out the insides of the post before putting it down Yeah, this is a uh, very strange. I don't see any any way that this battery is just gonna set down on hoses. The whole tray is missing. Huh. Well, we'll adjust that later. Let's just see if we can get this this guy to fire up first. What was the convention? Was it? Plus, minus first, and then positive. I don't remember. Uh, it's warmer than yesterday, but it's still pretty darn cold. So we'll give this a shot, and then the next step, I think, we'll just take off the um, we'll take out the take out the computer, swap it with what was in there apparently try to bring it back to its original state all right so well, it isn't sparking but i still don't see how this battery is supposed to sit in there <laughs> all right let's uh tighten these bad boys down Okay, so we can't blame the connection any longer. Uh, so what do you think? You guys want to sit in this view? Yeah, because at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to fire up. But if it does, there's gas that's about, what, four years old now? Five years old, maybe? So just for giggles, let's see if she turns over. She's beeping. All right, here we go. All right, am I supposed to push brake? This relay is clicking, but I can't reach it. And I don't want to sit on that seat. That is so disgusting. <laughs> let's see, let's try this again. Ouch. Okay, so we have a new battery. Is the engine locked up? I don't think so. 
they lock up so quickly. So what we'll do is um, see if the engine turns over by hand. If I can even reach it. Wow, these things are so tightly packed. I don't even know where to, to start reaching. So this one here. Uh, I was hoping this was going to be a quick will it run, but I don't think it's going to be that way. So give me, let me do a little bit of thinking and then uh, see what we can do. Uh, maybe we will just go ahead and uh, try to rotate. I don't even have anything to grab onto that's not easily accessible from top side. I don't think there's anything accessible from the bottom side either. All right. Let me give it some thought, and I'll bring you guys back around in a bit. Closest place I can reach is the alternator bolt here, uh, without going into too much uh, depth, but the problem is that's not the right size, so let me go find the right socket for that. Well, I'm not expecting too much from this, but we'll just give it a shot. It's a 10 millimeter. We'll see if it could turn. Well, yeah. All right. Well, the engine is turning. Let me see. Well, it was turning. Let's see if we get it go the other way. I mean, you know, some of my favorite YouTubers. Yeah, turning quite nice actually. Some of my favorite YouTubers, you know, like uh, Mortsky Puddins, Musty One. You know, they're working on really cool vintage cars and such. You know, I don't even know where I would plug in the uh, the lone switch to turn it over from here. So anyway, it's turning. So let's uh, let's hit it once and see if it's going to spin it now. Okay, so the engine is not locked up, but it is not turning over, so give it a little bit more thought and uh, bring you guys back when we have uh, some more progress. Okay, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Oh, that's washed out. I'm going to shift gears a little bit and let's connect to the port. Uh, see if we can read any of the codes. Uh, someone's already done that, obviously, because the port's just hanging. So let me hook up the things and let's see what we can see. I tried to log on to the OBD2 slot or OBD or DB or whatever. Anyway, uh, it says it's not connected to the ECU, which is one of these things. But uh, why isn't it connected to the ECU? I don't know. So I'm going to do that plan that I mentioned earlier and that's to swap out the old one uh, hold on let me turn the music off I just really like it so this is the the old one apparently and the new one is just inside here I'll uh, just pull it out from its little resting slot if I can let's pull out these plugs don't think we need to mark them too much it's pretty obvious right from the length does this one have a lock to it I have no clue yes it does oh that's nice so just push the tab in and then push it down and it just pops it right up cool you learn something new every day Yep, just tug at the wires to make sure you pull all the pins out. That's usually the best way to do it. Why is that thing not coming out? Let's give it a little bit of... Is that a screwdriver port? Did I just break it? You know what? If you just read the, just look a little bit, you'll see that 
there's just a little push pin on the side so this is supposedly the new one my thoughts is that this was running the car when he had it uh, and that it was just rough idle and when they went to check in they kept finding this fault and that fault and just kept going so I'm just going to see if we can recreate the original problem of a rough idle huh what do you guys think let's give that a shot I think I plug this car I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do this with the battery unplugged so let me quickly do that <laughs> we'll get rid of the neutral because it's easier to get to yeah, so even if it wasn't fried it's fried now right all right okay so that one goes in first then we take this shorter one that's one two and three in terms of pinhole size i'll show you what i mean in a second okay that's seated in i go for number two and then this friendly bad boy and then that one okay what i meant by one two and three is one three and two so the sockets are all of a different size so now that's in there i have no clue what this is why it's not plugged into anything uh there's nothing under the cover so that goes there and whatever it is ooh, a dead bug whatever it is we're supposed to have it on this side so let me see what is let's just reseed it for kicks and grins all right that's it i have no clue what that is what those are oh this one is terminated uh-huh so this one might just be a feedback loop or to program it perhaps so technically now we have the old i think it's sparking when i plug it in is anything plugged in so technically we have the old one back in and i don't know if that's going to make a difference but we have to start somewhere right i guess we could check the fuses next see if it doesn't turn over but let's give it another shot see what happens same thing let me check the fuses real quick see what's going on uh, let's see if this is now reading from the ECU though this thing meaning the um, see if it's reading the uh, the engine codes now no it says it's not connected to the ecu still all right let me uh let's check some fuses i'll, I'll do that now just you know, don't uh, don't want to bore you with that so just open this up and see what fuses are there and what's not and bring you guys back in a bit i checked all the fuses uh with this quick you know pen pen you know you just Put it in and it lights up when there's a connection <clears throat> all of them are work they're all there's no bad fuse so uh i'm gonna have to give this some more thought um potentially I, the obd2 reader is not reading because it says that it's not connected to uh the ecu so somewhere we're having a an issue so I'm going to give this some more thought and uh, bring you guys back when we have something more solid to go with. You know, sometimes uh, 
you think you do something, you know something, and you realize that you didn't know. Do you remember this wire that I pulled off here? Well, I thought that was a wire that we took back a long time ago to the amplifier that was sitting in the trunk or the, or the back area. Well, guess what? Apparently that wire goes to the starter. <laughs> so obviously it's not going to turn. So let's give it a shot now. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, hopefully it's not going to just make clicky noises. So let's give it a shot. Oh, I hate that beeping noise. I wonder if there's a way to disable it. All right, here we go. Sliding up. Awesome. She's turning over. Great. Okay, that's one step down. Uh, let's see, what should we do next? Let's, um, I wonder if we should uh, put, uh, just for giggles, squirt some. I don't think I have starting fluid, but let's see what I have to squirt down in there. Let's just see what's going on. Okay, so let me uh, go find something and uh, we'll come back. So I don't have um, starting fluid, but I do have some carb choke cleaner, which is extremely flammable. Anyway, just if it's going to sputter, remember we changed the uh, computer to the um, old one. I don't know if the fuel pump or anything is working, but I don't even know if there's spark, but those spark plugs look like a pain in the booty to get out. So let's just, uh, let's just see if it's going to do anything. And the throttle body looks like it's shut. <laughs> let's see if it even got anything in there. Oh, wow. Nice. So something is working. The throttle body was shut. I moved with my finger. All right, let's give it a shot just to see if it's going to light off. I highly doubt it. I hope it doesn't blow up. What the hey? Doesn't even sound like it wants to light off. Oh, let's give it a little bit of gas. No. Yes, yes, I know. No, you know, there's a lot of things we needed to check, but when these electronic cars, you got a lot of stuff going on. Let's see if we can get a little more just for. All right, that should be enough. If it doesn't light off this time, then. We know we have other trouble. And I'm keeping the battery charger on the battery, even though it's a new battery, but... All right, one more time. Let's see what happens. It's not even sputtering. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even sputtering. All right, so... Back to the drawing board. At least we got it to turn over. So, one thing off the list. Let me uh, give it some thought. And in the meantime, I did uh, do a little bit of house cl cleaning while I was thinking. And uh, so, it's got rid of some of the the crappiness inside. Yeah, it's still crappy. But got that plastic bag off. That window does work, so I can't put it up. So I'll do that. You can see it froze pretty bad back here um, but yeah, it looks a lot better without the uh, plastic wrap on it so we'll see what we can do to get this thing um, going uh, the the reader that I'm talking about this OB uh, where is that thing right here it's pretty dark but it, that's that uh, port which is technically communicating with the ECU, but unfortunately, it's not. It says there's no connection to the ECU. So trying to trying to think now that we got it to turn over. I wonder if we should just swap out the ECUs one more time, since the old one technically wasn't working and the new one was supposed to. So let's just try that. So let me swap it out, and then I'll bring you guys back. Swapped out the old one. 
with the new one and uh, there should be enough ether in there to make it some noise or not ether some carb cleaner just so let's uh let's give it a quick shot if it sputters then we're on the right track and here we go it's not even sputtering <laughs> Uh, give it gas. Funny thing is, I didn't hear the fuel pump kick in either, so I wonder. I checked all the fuses, but I'll go ahead and check the, the fuse. But even though it should fire off, right? Because we sprayed something down his throat. Let's just do one more spray real quick. See if it. Uh, Can't get that in the. There we go. All right. And then, of course, the next one would be to check the uh, the spark. But even even so, I don't know. It's got that ECU thing. All right, here we go. And just for. It's not even trying to light off. Yeah, it's not even trying to light off. Okay, so we gave it a shot. We put the old one in and it's still not working. Okay, so give me some more thinking time and see you guys soon. Pulled off one of the um, spark plug uh, boots and I stuck in a screwdriver and then we'll bring it close to this metal part here and you guys tell me if there's a spark because I can't see it <laughs> I don't have the uh, the what do they call those switches uh, I guess I could make one it's pretty simple actually so tell me if you see a spark okay ouch so let's see if we got a spark on that. Hey again, okay, it's me uh, back after a very long two or three months. Uh, I'll probably mention it in the intro here, but we're back working on this uh, ECU for the uh, Land Rover. Now this is the one that's open here. Um, not sure how much footage I'm actually going to include from the past, you know, getting to this point. But basically, uh, using the information, you know, I couldn't find any information for this project in um, on the net for Land Rover. The only information I was able to find was for BMW, and apparently BMW Land Rover share the same ECU of certain types of cars. So with that information, I was using, yeah, assuming everything is the same in terms of pinout. Uh, in fact, it is the same. Uh, I was able to uh, make this simple harness, okay, uh, and use this simple harness and this KDCAN USB interface. Uh, let me put that up here real quick too. You guys don't need to see me, so let me see. Yeah, so using that, uh, we were able to get the information based on the. Uh, we want that based on. this setup okay so long story short what we're going to do is if I can find the right uh, camera input we'll just go back to here so if I this long story short is this information we're getting is the 
connection from this cable to this ECU. Now I'm stumbling a bit because it's, uh, it's at the same time I'm trying to convince myself on what I need to do. <laughs> but uh, this is the pin that we will need to uh, short to get this to uh, let's see can you see that focus on it yeah so you see this pin this is the pin we're going to short the one that's in the round right there and that corresponds to this pin right here all right so you'll see that from the top. Then we, what we do is we'll power on the unit, short that pin out for about 10 seconds. And then once that's shorted out, we'll be able to uh, then read the information from this ECU into the computer and also write to the ECU. Now, my intention is not to try to tune it. Now tuners use this program. That how I found this uh, ms4k.net was the uh, ms4x.net. So I was when looking for this model, you know, the Siemens MS DME MS43. I was able to find that information again for the BMW community. Now we're using this for a different application, but my intention for this particular application is to actually just read the new, the old ECU and I'm going to assume that everything in here is correct and just flash this new ECU with the one-to-one. -one. Uh, so in order to read that, now we'll do the, uh, we'll do this, uh, these are, you don't need those. So basically, we come to this MS, this wiki here, and I've got all the information from this particular thing. It gives you the steps, how to connect, etc., etc. And basically, this, like I said, this is where I got the information for the the connection. Uh, you know how to communicate with the hardware, and you know the, the, the what potential issues they would have. And you see the picture that I had uh, in this this picture here is actually that the one on the bottom there is actually just a blown up version of that and in in doing so now we're able to uh, look at how this is run it's a long wiki so you just really have to read it to to get an understanding of what needs to be done a lot of risk involved of course uh, but uh, it's not working anyway, so I've got nothing to lose, right? So basically, I'm using something called JM Garage Flasher. It is a program that is linked to on the uh, on this this wiki here. Now, with this, let's put it here so we can see it and and not see my face. In fact, you don't even need to see my face. Let's just go straight to the screen here now what this what this does and we'll see it together is right now this is not connected to the ECU so in order to connect it it gives a little bit of info here you know how to uh, put it into boot mode etc etc and that's basically shorting the pin out uh, so when we short the pin out uh, it's to short the pin out here for the uh, program to be able to read it. Now let's move this on this side. So right now if I hit connect it won't do anything. But I want to show you that how I, I'm going to uh, put this into boot mode and then be able to connect it. Uh, let's see here. I want so basically, as I mentioned uh, before, so you, you know this, uh, this is requiring a 12 volt uh, 
power supply, you know, it's coming from the car, so it's assuming 12 volts. So assuming that we power this up and the, this, this module also has an input and ground uh, and then the communication ports. So basically I'm just using my benchtop power supply. It's set at, uh, at 12.9 volts, you know, so roughly a, a good battery and a good charging thing. So when I short out this pin, uh, let me connect that up, show that to you as well real quick. So basically it's just a connection from there to the power supply. So what we'll do is I'm going to now short out this pin. This this pin right here and that hold it for 10 seconds. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but basically just hold that for 10 seconds as I power on the uh, power supply. So we'll do that now. And we've got power. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you pull this pin out and it should be in boot mode. And one thing that I noticed here is I don't know how well that's going to focus on that. Let's see. But you can see that it is drawing 182 milliamps. Uh, so the, the, the ECU is in fact alive. Uh, so now this ground pin we can just set aside. We don't need that. Try not to touch that. And now we'll come back to our, uh, to our program. And as you can see here, now we're going to hit connect and hopefully it should connect so it says ms43 connecting as you can see there and it is still connected via the pin uh, which is the read write pin uh, i believe it's 40 something whereas we um there's a couple so there's pin 32 and there's also pin 3 uh, on this terminal and the block and then this terminal block I'm using this terminal block it seems that this one has a little bit of a more solid connection so as you can see now we're connected all right uh, and from that particular instance now we can do a full read so when I push read it's reading the flash it's going to take quite a bit of time so as you can see it's going to count up uh, and this will now have this full file that was in this ECU so in the event something goes wrong um, we can always reflash what was in this file that we are now getting here so this uh, in the meantime while it's doing that it's going to take a few minutes it's only at 19% and I pushed the wrong button you don't need to see me or the bench right now but let's see here we'll just do We'll do that. Okay, so now you can see that it's slowly moving forward. So the logic what I'm thinking is now in order to read these, there's a there's a file which we'll look at here in a bit together again. But the file definition file is based for the BMW and not for the Land Rover. So I don't have a way to feel certain that this is going to be a direct map of what's in my ECU to what's in the BMW ECU. So for that reason, it's it's going to be a bit shaky. So what we're going to do in this particular instance is I'm just going to record what you see on the um, screen here, uh, meaning save rather what's in the flash. I'm going to do the exact same process with the old one, quote unquote, the original one rather that came with it. And then I'm going to reflash the new one with the old program with the old binary would I do that I'm assuming that something is wrong with the now ECUs have uh, key codes you know the, the key code to have um, active at the, uh, when you put the key in the ignition and you turn it, it sends a signal to the ECU saying, yes, that key is linked to this ECU and it gives the ECU 
start capability. I know there's a, way, there's a few ways on the BMWs to um, bypass that immobilizer. I don't know if it's in the same location in this ECU. So the form, as you'll see in the wiki there, they actually have it. I'm not going to I'm going to just put the very simple, assuming that the new ECU was not flashed correctly, and just hopefully use all the information that I have uh, there. Now, we see on the, we see now on the screen that we have the reading complete here. So what I want to do is I want to save this, all right, and it's, it's going to save um, I've got Land Rover tuning stuff. Uh, I'm not going to put it in JM Garage Flash. We'll just make a new one. Uh, we'll call it a new folder. And we'll call these uh, binary files, I guess. Binary files. And we'll go ahead and open that folder up. And we'll call this one... Um, uh, land rover underscore new underscore ECU underscore original underscore files. It's going to be confusing. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. New. ECU original files. So it's the new ECU original files. Um, yeah, we'll just save it. I mean, I'm probably going to end up confusing myself. But you can see here in the table. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but here in the table. The, this is the binary file that comes out of the ECU. Now, in order to make sense of what this is actually saying, you have to have an interpreter. And that's a different program altogether. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now actually do this whole process again. Um, and let me just shut this one off because we don't need it. And I'm going to take up the, I'm going to take the old ECU apart. Uh, this was the original ECU. And where's that? Uh, uh, and do the exact same thing we just did with this and save that file so let me set up and I'll bring you guys right back okay so the basically it's a simple process it's um, a Torx head oh that was loud I don't need to use that. I can use my hand but why, why use it when someone else can do it for you very simple box Nothing complex about it. Uh, I don't know if you guys want a side view of that as well. Oops, let's do... Let's... Nope. Let's do that. There we go. Alright, so here's a side view as well. So just a very simple. Uh, we'll set those aside and this one just slides right out. So now we have two ECUs. Hopefully we won't misplace them. So this is the one that came off the original. And this is the one that came off of the... Well, that was purchased later. And it was assumed that, the, the, that they were flashed correctly. But as we saw at the intro video, it did not work. So I've powered down the uh, the terminal for this one. It's it's very simple. So we have uh, to remove. I'm just going to follow exactly. So I'm going to take one off of there, and just put it on the other one. So we're just going to take a pin off of 32, I believe. Yeah, and we're going to put it on pin 32 here. So. And then this is relatively simple. It's, uh, the middle row, the whole middle row is uh, the ground. And then the bottom left and the top left are the positive terminals. So, 
And like I said, when I made the harness, I just made it out of uh, these um, very simple uh, what do they call these things? Crimping tool th things, whatever. <laughs> I'm losing my brain. All right, so what do we say? So the middle, the middle is the minus, or the, the ground in this case. Uh, just hook that up. Hey, simply. And where's my other one? I should have one more. There we go. Yeah, I've been putting this off for quite a while. I did not want to do this. It's uh, something that was kind of putting me off in terms of the project. So again, I could end up breaking it, but uh, I could end up fixing it. So only way we're going to know is if we try it. All right. So these are now all in place as per the the original one that we tried. And then if you recall, we're going to now short this um, pin up, pin short it up. And that way that'll give us the ability to read it once we get into boot mode. So let's turn on the Turn on the program. Uh, see screen. So let's turn on the program again. Or not turn on. Well, let's let's bring the program back online. Okay, there we go. It's not connected, so we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put this short out the pin for the boot mode. Uh, boot mode basically just is telling the the system that it needs uh, it's going to be either receiving or sending information uh, so I should have been counting right now so let's do let's just assume we're in seven eight nine ten all right so now we should be in boot mode so when we do a connect on that uh, it it says that it's connecting and from here it should be good to connect to the ECU. So now we have that connected we can do a full read of that so again you see it's reading the memory contents now this, uh, read into this as you look at the, uh, as you look into what's going on and, and, and how this is actually working, you, you understand that it is a little bit um, complex. I, I called around town to see if I could find a shop that would actually do this for me. And they say, bring the car and we're not going to do it without the car. I said, look, I just want you to reflash and uh, long story short, I could not get anybody out there. And there's a couple of proprietary programs that I guess Land Rover uses uh, when they're doing this. And I asked them if they had it, they said yes. But long story short, like I said, looking around, if you mess this up, you could potentially end up uh, breaking the ECU so it won't be utilizable. You know, it won't be able to use it. Uh, the it's not working, so there's no. I don't see the big risk. I, I, if if it were apparently in the 512K, so that's the uh, least a portion of that is the is the VIN number associated. With it. There's and all that goes. that I'm getting now, what you see on the screen. I don't know if that 520 for this. So potentially it might work, it might not work. So we're not touching the old ECU, so what, we're, what we have now is the old ECU uh, file, uh, which will still be in the old ECU. So if 
it wasn't working with either one. It, it, we tried both of them in the car. See how this works, and um, we're going to now have the, uh, the all the the, the five twelve um, K in one as a <laughs> well. We'll try to make a name that thing, but I don't know. All right, so reading complete. Now I suppose the dump view here we could check this with the other one does this can i expand that oh yeah i guess i could so i suppose we could take this information here and compare it to a screenshot of the old one but let's first um let's first save this all right so we'll save it in the same location uh land rover tuning stuff binary files so we got the original bin file, so we'll call this one Land Rover uh, Original ECU Bin Files. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. And what I think I'm going to do now, can I? I guess I could compare the two bin files in a, in a, in, it's just text, isn't it? Huh. Uh, so I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't need to do anything else on this particular, um, I don't need to do anything else in this particular ECU, because I'm, this is kind of the, let's say the original, so we don't want to mess with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo this ECU from the, the computer, put it back in its case, and then set it aside since now we have all the files we need, and then we'll go back to that. So let me do that and bring you guys back. Okay, so we have the two files as you can see here now. Uh, the original, <laughs> my naming wasn't very good. Land Rover new ECU original files, Land Rover original ECU files. So, Anyway, so the new one meaning that it was the one that didn't work and the original is the one that came with the car, so don't forget that. All right, now <clears throat> I wonder if we should check these files out or should, if we should just go ahead and uh, if we should just go and do the, do the read or the write rather and, and then just stick it on the car and see what happens. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So. As uh, as you can see, I actually went ahead and put the old ECU back, uh, the, rather the new one. Now this is the, the one that we're going to flash. So we need to strap it in into bootstrap mode, and then we can uh, <coughs> we can then have this one ready to go. So basically, as you can see on the side cam view, that the setup is identical so this one goes to the the pin number pin number 32 on this board here which is equal to this board right here you can see on the side and then we will we will write the old original ECU files to this one but before I do that, I am curious if we could just do, let me see if I can at least open this file up using the Tuner Pro program and the BMW definitions file and see what we get with that. So give, give, give me a few seconds. Okay, going to Tuner Pro now, we open Tuner Pro and I hope I know what I'm doing. I pretty much don't. So here we just have this blank slate. And what we want to do is we want to load the definitions. So all those binary code that we saw, those mean something. But the definition that I have are for BMW, mind you. So it's not, uh, it's not for us, as you can see. Uh, so where do we got here? Um, Land Rover. So this, 
I found this community patch list again on the same site. I'm just going to use it. I don't know if it's going to be the proper one, but what I want to do is now I want to open the bin file that we just looked at and now we have the Landover, so binary file. So let's open the the one that came from the new one. Alright. And what this does now, I should have some information, but I don't. Alright, why don't I? I thought I opened it. Let's try that again. Alright, I guess I'm going to have to play with it a little more. Okay, it turns out I just had to double click it. Anyway, so what we have is a vehicle identification number. Now this is in hex code and the only way to make the VIN turn into the, the VIN number is through a uh, an operation which BMW uses for theirs but when you put it into the BMW system it doesn't work so this is the this is from that one now let's take a look at here we can compare so I have that one and now I want to open up a, this one here and it didn't work alright anyway I'm just going to compare these two and once I figure out how they bring them onto the screen at the same time, we'll look at it together. Okay, so I played around a bit. Uh, I think it's purely because the the table that they use for the BMW is different from the uh, Land Rover. So quite frankly, this is not helping me out a bit. So Tuner Pro for that, I'm shutting it down. So I'm going back to my original plan of reading the, or rather flashing the ECU. Uh, we'll just flash this ECU up completely with the old original file and go from there. So I'm going to do that whole startup sequence again, flash it, cross our fingers and see what happens with that. So let me see if I can get you guys also on uh, so remember we we put down the pin here for getting it into the mode we turn on the power we count to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 all right and then we go to our screen and then we open the JM Garage Flasher program and it should see that oh, I didn't mention that you're supposed to tell which com the the dongle is anyway so let's connect it should connect to the to the ECU alright it's connected so what I want to do is open the file and I'm going to open it from from the desktop where I have it saved if I can find it. Uh, la, la, la. Okay, maybe I don't have it on the desktop. Huh. Alright, so Land Rover tuning stuff, binary files. So if you recall, the new ECU was the old one, and this is the one we want, the original ECU file. Notice that they're both 512K. So we're going to open that. You know what? Anything. Let's uh let's do a wow. 
I'm just curious. I'm going to take a, um, a picture of that and then we'll open up the other one and just compare the two. So let me get that set up. Okay, actually what we have here now is on the left side is the original, um, the, the, well, the one that's currently in the memory of the of the unit and on the right side is what we were thinking of writing and I'm just curious if we see any 20, 30, just any, I'm just checking to see if there's any differences. You know what? Doesn't seem to be. <laughs> Uh, does it, yeah, okay. Doesn't mean that it's not flash. All right, so let's go back here, and now let's uh, let's open let's open the old one again here. Uh, where was it? it was in OneDrive, desktop, Land Rover tuning stuff. What do we got? Binary, binary files. So we want the original ECU. All right, after can read and write full flash. So, am I not connected? Oh, we lost connection. Okay, so notice it said wrong echo bytes. So let me power it down, and then we short out the pin again, and then we power it up. We count. Two, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We should be back in boot mode. Whoa, be careful. We don't want to short things out. Let's see if it connects. Huh. It's giving me an error. Maybe we should let's check, check that out completely. And we don't need this anymore. It's just confusing. Let's open that up again. I'll tell you something, I have a lot less current consumption, but let's see if it connects. All right. Something happened between now and then. So I need a little bit of troubleshooting. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened, but it turns out that the... Um, <coughs> The either one of the cables came out or whatever. So let me let me try to get this back into working mode here. All right, we're back. We're back online. I don't know what happened, and no, no cable was out. But anyway, we're connected again. So I'm going to open that file up, and I'm going to go for it. And we'll just go here, find where we had it. Where did we have it? It was there. It was there. And it was there. Binary files to the original binary file. And there we go. So, you ready? Here goes nothing. We're erasing the flash, as you can see. And flash has been erased. Let's open this up so we can read what's going on. And it's writing the flash. We're at 3%, 4%. I don't want to have my arm accidentally touch anything here. Kind of scary. Um, but once this is done writing, we'll put it back into its shell that we have from the original, like the original in its own shell here. And we'll take it outside and strap it to the car. But let's see what happens here. I don't want to push any buttons on the computer and give it any reason to freak out. So this is quiet time here, but uh, let's just look at it together. <clears throat> All right, I'll, I'll bring you back when it's 100%. Okay, so we have the completed writing, as you can see on the screen. It says write complete right here. 
So we've uh, reflashed this ECU and what I'll do now is I'll take this ECU out and oh we got low battery <laughs> and and then let me shut that down and then we'll put that in here and we'll charge my battery up at the same time and we'll put it on the car all right see you guys in a bit okay so we're outside now uh, in the bay where the ECU goes it's kind of in, you know impossible to mess this up because it only the cables really only go one way uh, in terms of how they're blocked so uh, the you see it goes in like that all right and then and then we just take the the plugs and we start plugging them in but well, first let's get the power cable in place Did I put the ECU backwards? <laughs> no? Why is that one not going in? Because I'm videotaping this. Videotaping. Is, do they call that anymore? Videotape? So these connectors, you, uh, you you push it in, and then when it gets to a point, you click it, you pull it back, it, it pulls it, retracts it into the, the connector itself. So again see you hear it click and then you just kind of it clicks into place you just go down the line with these connectors and then we got this one here it's kind of foolproof because all each connector is unique clicks in and then last but not least, this bad boy. So now all of our connectors are in. We can give it some juice, see if it starts screaming and yelling at us. And we'll go from there. Let's let's give it a shot. Nothing to lose. Okay, so here goes uh, here goes nothing. If it works, it works. If not, we're gonna check out some sensors and stuff. So. Turning the key now. And we got nothing. Now, I don't, don't know if they put something in there in the circuit and another immobilizer. Let's squirt it a bit with some starting fluid just for S's and G's. Oops. That's not starting fluid, that's upholstery cleaner. No, that's good. So let me <laughs> let me go get a rag and wipe that off. And we'll try it again. Don't know if it's going to run, but it definitely has a very clean intake. <laughs> Alright, we sprayed a little bit of a flammable stuff down it. Let's see if it does anything. Not doing anything. Well, uh, yeah, uh, will it run? Uh, no, it won't. <laughs> I've tried um, everything that I thought of, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, taking on someone else's project is always a challenge. It's always a risk. And I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go anyway, but we, we started something and we also have some more information now. A couple of things that I, you know, it's been a few months actually since I got the car. In fact, it was in uh, January when I got it and uh, I've been just procrastinating, trying to not do what I did uh, just because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. And, you know, basically I was right. It, I, it didn't work. But this time period also gave me a chance to think about it and I, I posted this video I'm posting this video just to bring you guys along on the ride the thought process uh, there's a few mistakes made uh, you know just trying to jump in you know like I said hands and feet just to get it going uh, but unfortunately that was uh, we couldn't get it going but I don't think that is the cause of what we've done here I think uh, so far what we've done in terms of flashing the ECU that's all good I, I think it's going to work when I did some tests on the ECU meaning like I 
played with the throttle position, I would hear the throttle body actually move uh, since it is a servo connection. So I don't think we've lost all hope. Um, doing a bit of research, I think I found one of the potential culprits for this problem is the crankshaft positioning sensor. I have ordered it, uh, but this video is already pretty long as it is. So I'm posting what we have now. Will it run? I hope so. Uh, will it run in this video? Unfortunately not. Uh, but the position sensor should be here in the next uh, few days. And I'll try to get on that right away. And again, kind of excuse was also the weather. <laughs> it was cold. And even today, it's 20-something uh, degrees outside and we're mid-March. So you never know here in Indiana what the weather's going to be like. Now, uh, again, I was just bringing you guys along for the ride. Uh, there's a, a lot of footage that I actually did not incorporate because it would just made it longer. I tried to change the... Uh, contacts on the OBD sensor point uh, just to see if we can um, potentially get it to communicate uh, but it turns out that the protocol the J protocol it is CAN bus and J protocol uh, I just don't have the proper interface for that I was just using a cheap eBay uh, special uh, or was it Amazon I don't remember anyway just to, just to read the codes which it didn't connect long story short uh, so some of those things I just left out and then um, obviously I do want to get into I think the once we get it started then you know I need to change the brake lines and to brake pads and all sorts of fun stuff but it, obviously none of that is worth doing until we get the engine running so let's see uh, it's not over yet uh, we're not calling it we're just going to see once we get the crankshaft positioning sensor back I'm assuming that that's not sending the pulse to the ECU which is then telling the ECU when to fire, so it's just not firing at all. Uh, so that is my hope. I uh, thank you for coming along. Uh, sorry about some of the audio issues. Uh, apparently when you're downloading, or rather when the, the computer was talking to the ECU uh, and writing and reading the files, it was using the a lot of bandwidth from the uh, USB ports, which is the microphone is connected to. So. Yeah, there was a few dropouts there, but I, I, I didn't bother putting footnotes or such because uh, there wasn't anything um, that was imperative to be heard during those periods. Anyway, it was just kind of filling in the voids because I like talking. Thanks so much for hanging with me. Hang with Big E. Uh, please join me on the next adventure uh, on this particular project. Uh, hope we can get it going, and once we do, it'll be great. Thank you so much. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.